Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'll be showing you how I like to cook a whole wild duck. I had a couple of great duck hunts this season and came home with a perfect mallard for whole bird cook. So let's get to it. To get things started, you'll need a whole plucked wild duck. And besides mallards, this recipe works for just about any puddle ducks. Gadwalls, wood ducks, widgeons, pintails, mallards, even teal if they're big enough for your trouble. Just avoid the stronger flavored diver ducks. And a helpful tip about cooking really any wild duck is to soak your bird in a saltwater brine overnight. This will help draw up blood, add moisture to the meat, and calm down any concerns about gamey taste. To get things started with this recipe, take a sharp pair of kitchen shears and remove the spine of your duck. Then press down hard on the breastplate until your bird is butterflied open and flat. This method is known as spatchcocking. Spatchcocking your duck will help cook it faster, but more importantly, more evenly. One of the biggest challenges with cooking whole ducks is the temperature and consistency between the breast meat and the leg meat, and butterflying your bird like this will help a ton. Another challenge with whole ducks is getting their skin to crisp and the duck fat beneath to properly render out at the same time. If you've ever heard of a greasy or chewy duck, it's usually because the fat didn't render properly and there wasn't enough of a nice contrasting crispy skin texture. To address that problem, start by patting your duck dry with a towel and try to pick up as much moisture as possible. Once patted dry, carefully score the skin with a very sharp knife. We want to expose the fat layer throughout the bird in order for it to properly render and drain the fat. So go nuts, just don't cut into the meat. You get extra points if you can make that very fancy, tiny checkerboard pattern. And use mine as an example of someone who gets by with some seriously sloppy knife work. Still works. To further ensure we get crispy skin, coat the duck with flaky kosher salt and then let it sit overnight in the refrigerator. The salt and dry refrigerator air will help dry out even more moisture from the duck, so when it comes time to roast, that skin will crisp up nicely. It's now the next day and it's finally time to start cooking. Start by preheating your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit and toss in your lightly oiled cast iron skillet to heat up alongside with it. This duck spent the night drying out in the fridge, so the salt has done its job at this point. Go ahead and wipe off as much of it as you can with a clean towel. I did that off camera over the sink, so take this fake wiping action as me showing you how to do it. It's very technical work. Duck is the type of meat that changes in flavor a great deal when you overcook it, so getting the internal temperature correct is absolutely vital. That's why I'm going to put a temperature probe into the deepest portion of the breast meat just to make sure that I can get to that exact rare to medium rare temperature and not overshoot it. If you don't have a remote temperature probe, I strongly suggest getting one. But you can also try to get by with an instant read thermometer and check the temperature every 15 minutes or so if that's all you have on hand. After all this effort hunting the duck, prepping the duck, cooking the duck, I want to taste the duck, so I'm just seasoning with cracked pepper and garlic powder. After seasoning, carefully remove the screaming hot cast iron from your oven and place the duck skin side down into that pan. And let's just take a moment to appreciate that sizzle. Man, I love that sound. With the duck in the pan, set it in your oven for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, take your cast iron out and using tongs, flip your duck over where the skin is now facing up and place it back in your oven until the internal temperature is reading either 125 degrees Fahrenheit for rare or 130 degrees Fahrenheit for medium rare. Do not let it cook further than that. Just trust me on this one. And after roughly 20 to 30 minutes of actual cooking time, the duck is done. But don't forget to let it rest for at least 15 minutes. This gives the internal juices a chance to redistribute as the body hits peak internal cooking temp then starts to cool. So don't rush this last step before carving. It's more vital than you think. While you wait, save your rendered duck fat. This stuff is cooking gold. You can use it to build a rich savory sauce, or if you get enough of it, you can make some duck fat french fries or even confit something. After resting, I went ahead and carved off each breast and then cut them into smaller serving portions, along with removing the leg meat. The meat overall comes out a deep ruby red. It may seem like it's too rare, but by culinary standard, duck meat is actually a red meat. Just trust your thermometer, not your eyes, and enjoy the fantastic flavor. This duck turned out perfect. The breast skin was nice and crispy, the meat was juicy but not greasy, and served over a bowl of wild rice, it was gone in seconds. 
And that'll do it for this one. And thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to help you out with my two cents. Now, if you're new to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it if you considered hitting that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It certainly helps keep me going and you'll have access to countless recipes with more great content to come. All right, y'all. Take care.